Today I'm going to be sharing an orchid painting while I show you how I repot and take care of orchids so that they bloom year after year. Suddenly, I think I'm a gardening channel. If this is your first time on my channel because you clicked on it because of orchids, I don't normally share that much about my plants. This is kind of a one-time thing. So, you know, you've been warned. I, I paint things, a lot of things, weird things. And I post about my orchids, especially back in March when everything was in bloom. I post about them quite often and I've had so many requests from people wanting to know how I keep them alive. So it's actually really, they're really very easy to keep alive if you follow a few general guidelines. Before we get started, for those of you who are members over at Patreon, the full lesson of this orchid painting is available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer tutorials. I have about 200 of them over there right now that you get instant access to as soon as you sign up, and I have a new tutorial every single week. If you head over to my Patreon video library, link is in the video description, you get access to a free two hour colored pencil demonstration and you can see all of the tutorials I have available there to see if it's going to be a fit for you. Now let's move on to repotting this and the painting at the same time somehow. The orchid that I'm potting today, this is what his blooms looked like several months ago. And those blooms lasted on this guy, I wanna say about a month and a half. The blooms on your flower are not they're forever, they're not permanently. A lot of people think when the blooms die, the plant is dead. It's not, they only bloom about normally once a year. I've got a couple of orchids that bloom two to three times a year, but that's not super, super common. How long your orchid stays in bloom will depend on a few factors. It could be uh, dependent on the type of orchid, the type of hybrid it is. Some, the flowers will seem like they last forever. I've actually had some that lasted for eight months. It just kept throwing out new blooms on the same stem. And then I've had some that will last two to three weeks max. If your plant is shocked because it was moved into a new environment, it may blow those leaves a little bit earlier and that's okay. If you can keep them alive and you keep them growing, he should make new, or new blooms in the future and probably next, they usually come into bloom. End of, end of fall, early winter is when they come into spike and the blooms really happen end of late winter to early spring on most. There are exceptions, but that's how it is on most. So just get, keep him alive, keep him growing and hopefully he will rebloom for you. The first thing we're going to talk about when repotting your orchid is just the pot choice. This pot here, not ideal. It's, it just doesn't, air is not getting in there. It is keeping those, it, the roots are gonna suffocate essentially and rot in that pot. You want a pot that has holes like the one you see next to me or the one that you see behind which we're going to be potting this in. You do wanna look for roots. And when you saw me pull that out, the roots look great on this orchid. And that is definitely something that you wanna look for. Roots that are nice and green and plump. You don't want roots that are brown or soggy. Those are not going to set you off to a very good start. You may or may not be able to save an orchid if the roots are, are looking pretty bad. So when you look for a new orchid, check those roots. Roots are so important. That's kind of your the foundation of your plant. The roots are, are just, Huge deal here, so that is what we are looking for. Now, usually when I buy a new orchid, I repot it right away. There are reasons that you might want to wait though. One of them would be if it is if your orchid is in bloom, you may wanna hold off and just so you don't put the, the whole thing into shock so you can enjoy those flowers longer. If you decide to wait to repot though, this is huge, don't overwater. In this case, see that moss that's in there? Those are real healthy, nice looking roots there. The brown ones there, not so much. But the if you're going to um, leave it in the moss, that moss holds so much water. It takes forever to dry out and especially in a pot like this. So you are really likely to have root rot there. This orchid here, I had for about two months before I repotted it, I watered it once. That is all it needed because it holds on to so much water. If I would have watered it more, I would have rotted those roots. So that's a really big deal. If you if you leave it in the pot it came in, just they don't need bear, that that moss just absorbs too much water. And so we're going to be repotting this into a much more suitable medium that is much easier for the average person not to overwater and rot out the plant with. 
So the first thing that I want to show you are the pots that I use. These are these really nice air pots. I get them from repotme.com. Last time I checked, they were out of stock. I will put a link to it in the video description though, so you can, can watch for that. But you put the plant in the part that looks kind of like a colander and it's just, it's easy to water. It's easy. The plant gets lots of air. And then I like to put mine inside of a decorative pot. I got that pot from Lowe's and see how it has all the holes. So you're going to have air moving around the plant and that's a big, big deal. You want air movement around the, those roots. Now there is a misconception that you'll occasionally hear people say like it's an old wives tale that the, the roots need light. They don't. That is absolutely not true, but they do need air. They need to be able to breathe. You do not want to smother these. And orchids like to be a bit root bound. Look at all these roots shoved in here. That's good. It's happy. It likes that. You don't, it, it's easy to think, well, it'll be happier in a bigger pot where it has more room to grow. No, I repot mine about every two years when the roots, there's almost no mi medium mixed in there or left in there. It's just all roots. You, they really like to be root bound. Now look at these spikes. My spikes are on this where the flowers were. They are dried out and that is really blurry, but they're completely dried out. When those are gone, you just want to snip those off near the end. You can use um, scissors, whatever you need, and you're just going to cut those near the end. Those are done. Those are dead. They were not going to grow more flowers. Now, it is possible for a spike to grow more flowers if it stays green if you leave it on there. I don't like to because that stress, it, it's taking more energy from the plant. The plant had its flowers. I want to give it an opportunity to grow more, to put its energy towards leaves and roots. Orchids are so slow to grow, very slow. So when it's putting its energy through to too much flat, you know, flowering twice in a year or three times in a year, which some do, some will do no matter what you do, but it, it just takes more energy from that plant. So in this case, this is a new plant. I want to set it off to a really good start. So we're, I'm just going to snip even the green stem there. It had no more flowers. And like I said, it might have grown additional flowers off of that. It can, it's not super common. I, I shouldn't say it's uncommon, but it's not like a guarantee. So let's just give this plant a little bit of a head start and cut those off. Now, thing to watch on those clippers, I run them over a lighter. I, I sterilize them with heat, with fire, because it is easy to spread certain viruses with orchids. They, you have a lot that are very, very common with these. So just something to be aware of when with your plants, I want to sterilize any cutting tools. And I also don't want to share, like some people will think, well, I'll, I'll water all my plants. I'll put a big bucket and soak them all in it together. Okay. Well, if one of those has a virus, you just gave it to all your plants. So, and it is common enough. You don't want to do that. I don't like my plants to touch. I try to keep the leaves from touching and I sterilize any tools I use from one plant to the next. So if one of mine gets a virus, chances are it's not going to wipe out my entire collection. Okay, now for actually repotting. I soaked this in water, all of that moss super wet. So now I need to remove all of that from the roots. And I want to gently do this. I want to attempt not to hurt any of the roots. More likely than not, you'll break one or two of them as you're going through here. Don't panic. It's not the end of the world, but ideally we want to keep as many of these roots intact as possible. And I'm just going to start pulling that wet moss out. And this is important. Make sure that's wet. Really soak this guy for five, 10 minutes. Let him get really wet. Let the, the roots soak up a lot of water. That's going to help them to be a bit more pliable and not as likely to break as if they were dry. This is a long process. So while we pull all of this moss out of the, the root ball, a um, couple of things you want to keep in mind. Lighting for orchids. They do not want to be outside or out. Well, they can actually be outside. Let's, let's clarify that a bit more. They don't want to be outside directly in the sun. That will burn them. They like warm weather. They're big fans of warm weather. If you put your orchids outside, you want them to be in bright, indirect sunlight. So like on a patio where they're not getting any direct sun. If they get direct sun, you will sunburn the leaves. And it, it's not pretty. They can live through it or it can turn into an infection. So, you know, just, just avoid the direct sun when, when they're outside. If you do leave them outside, if the weather drops below 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, I bring them indoors. They do not want to get that cold. So that's your first thing, your temperatures. That's a big deal. They are warm weather and you will have a thing called, there's orchids out there and they may have changed the name. They used to call them just add ice orchids and you would just put an ice cube in the orchid once a week. And the reason that kind of, it works because it keeps you from overwatering. The bad thing is the orchid does not like ice. I mean, if you were, and some people say, well, I've kept mine alive for months that way. I mean, yeah, okay, but, or not months, but years, but 
I, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend in that case, just put in what is an ice cube, like a tablespoon, put that much water in if that's what you're going to do, if you're not going to repot. In this case, because we're repotting, which I strongly recommend with this, the medium that I'm going to use here, then you can water normally and you want to flush the entire pot full of water once a week, it's actually very easy to do. So that whole ice thing, I don't recommend it. That's not, and in this case, the amount of water in an ice cube would not be enough to keep this guy going because of the, the mixing medium that I'm moving him into. So just want to throw that out there because I know that is something that gets brought up a lot where people are like, well, my orchid said just to add ice. Yeah, it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick that I mean, if somebody is prone to overwatering, it can kind of work. But like I said, you're better off repotting with a proper medium. And, and not that, that moss can't work, but like, you know, most people are going to overwater that. So let's get that out of there. The other thing, going back to sun, my orchids are in a south facing window and they're a couple of feet away from the window. So while in the morning they do have direct sunlight hitting them, they're far enough away from the window that none of them are getting sunburned. If you have a north facing window, you can probably just put it right in the windowsill, no problem. I've also had mine in east facing windowsills where they did get direct sunlight from that, but it, it was not so bright. I mean, it was morning light. And so that worked out really well. You're gonna have to kind of play around with them to see what works for you. One of the ways that you can tell if the plant is starting to get a bit too much light is the leaves will go from being that dark green to a really pale light green. Not all varieties will do this, but it, you know, and something that I can kind of tell on most of my plants, if they're getting a little too much light, those leaves will turn to a brighter, like a light, almost lime green. Too much light. Now on the flip side, you can provide too little light and that plant is not going to survive. So I see where people will put it like on a coffee table way away from any window. That's not going to be enough light for <laughs> the orchid. You're definitely going, they, they do need light in order to live. Oh, I'm so happy. These roots look great. That is a really nice root ball there. So now that I've gotten the moss out, if I leave a little bit of moss, it's not the end of the world, but I do want to get most of that off. Now you can see how it fits in this pot, though it's kind of a tight fit. That's good. That is a, the exact right pot for this orchid. Now you're not choosing the pot by how big the leaves are. I'm choosing the pot based on how mid, how the size of the root ball, that is what we're basing it off of. Because if you overpot this, like I mentioned before, that you will rot the roots. And the reason that that happens is the medium just stays too wet too long. So we're gonna use this orchid mix. It's a fairly inexpensive one. We've got some sphag moss. And I like to mix the two together. You don't have to do this. For years, I just used the orchid bark and it's a mixture of the bark, perlite, and what is the other thing, charcoal. I found that I, my orchids were drying out a little too fast. So by adding this moss, just a little teeny bit, when you add water, it just turns into this big amount. But mixing that in with my bark, the, the potting mix, I've, I just get a better result. So I got my potting mix all rinsed out and water in that, soaked that for a bit. And now we just need to start sticking this into this along with the moss. Actually, let's go ahead and pull some of that out and get it wet. See, just a small amount. And that is super blurry. There we go. Now we'll get that wet. Watch how big this, this blows up into this huge amount. So there it is, all nice and, and watered down. And I just mix, I don't stir them together. I just kind of take a handful of, of the bark and then a little handful of, or little pinches of the moss and mix them together. So I've got my, my orchid and I filmed this terribly, I apologize, but you, you should get the general idea. So I'm going to start sh um, shoving bits of bark and, or that potting mix, it's not just bark, in, to, in between these roots. And I want to make sure that the base of the orchid, the plant itself, the leaves need to be above the, the mixture. You don't want to bury that. That would cause it to rot. So see how I'm just going to start sticking pieces of that in there. My hand is really in the way. I apologize. Now, when it comes to watering, a couple of tips. One, in this case, with this medium, I'm going to run it just under the faucet and I want water to flush entirely through the pot. I want all of the medium to get wet again. And I do that once a week. I do it the same day that I clean the house so that everything stays even. And that works out really well for me. Don't be tempted to overwater. A lot of people will think, well, more water will make it healthier. No, you'll rot the roots. And that, like I, we've covered, is the most important thing. Keep those roots healthy. The other thing, you wanna make sure that water does not 
get into the crown of the plant. The, the leaves grow through the center. You can see a little teeny guy sticking up right there. You do not want to get water in there. If you do get water in there, I take a paper towel and soak as much of that water out. And then I blow on it really, really hard just in the center there to get as much of that water out of that crown as possible. If you get water in there, you'll get what's called crown rot and that plant will die. You can't, you really cannot rescue a plant that gets crown rot. If it starts to get root rot, you may be able to save it. Crown rot, that's, that's pretty much it. Unless it grows a kiki, you're, you're, you're out. That's not happening. And a kiki is just a baby plant growing off the, the mother plant. Sometimes that can happen. Not common enough to risk it. Just keep water out of the crown. So when I water it, I if you need to wipe off the leaves, you can. I just use a damp cloth with just water. But I just get water into the pot, right? Where I'm shoving everything in here. That, I just flush it through all of that. And little bits of moss mixed in there. And this moss is not packed really tight. So that's part of why it, it, it will dry out. You're not going to have a problem with the rot, root rot like I would with just solid moss. When you get it from the grower or you buy it from the grocery store or nursery, wherever you get your plants from, when the moss is in there, it is packed so tight. That's part of why the roots just aren't getting enough air if you overwater. Sometimes you will pot a plant like this and it will want to keep flopping to the side no matter how you get that bark and the, the potty medium in there. It just doesn't set up right. One of the things that I've done is taking a paintbrush and just shoved it down in the pot to kind of balance the plant upright until the roots grew where they needed to be. And that's worked out really well for me. Now you can see this guy sits perfectly fine inside his little decorative pot. And then again, when we water, we'll be watering. We'll, we just pull that whole thing out and water from the outer edges keeping the water away from the crown of that plant. Now, if you've got orchids, one of the things you really want it to do is to rebloom. Usually they bloom once a year and that they come into spike normally around late fall, early winter on most of my Phalaenopsis. And that's what this guy is, is a Phalaenopsis. So what I do is, or what I find has worked the best to get them to rebloom, they need to have a drop in temperature. Most of them do. I have a couple of varieties that don't care. They're gonna bloom no matter what I do with them. But with the, if you can get the temperature to drop eight to 10 degrees at night, for anywhere from four to, to, well, they usually say, I think six to eight weeks, but a couple of months there where the temperature is dropping about 10 degrees from the daytime temp, that is one of the things that will let the orchid know it is time to, to bloom. It's winter. Let's go ahead and put out a spike. Some people will put their plants outside at night as long again, like I mentioned earlier, we don't want to go below 50 degrees, but that is a way that you can get the temperature to drop. This is the fertilizer that I use. I don't use it often enough. You can get this on Amazon and you wanna dilute it a lot. I use about a quarter of what they recommend and I don't do it that often. I might fertilize once every other month. Honestly, I'm lazy about it. Technically, I should probably be doing it every other week, but that's what I do and that is what fertilizer I'm using. And if I weren't lazy, I probably would fertilize once every other week, um, but you know the lazy factor is strong in me, so I don't. But I, I weaken that, or I dilute it quite a bit. So again, a quarter of the strength that it recommends. And then in, I just add it to the water when I'm watering that day. So I'll put, put it in a big, huge cup or a pitcher and I just dump it over the roots like I would if I were just watering regularly. Now, one of the things I do want to throw out there, one of the ways that I have killed many orchids when I did all of these things I was talking about, where I repotted them, I was only watering once a week. They were in bright, indirect sunlight. Everything seemed good. One of the ways I have still caused root rot, even with all of that, I had the orchid in an area where it wasn't getting getting any airflow. So putting a ceiling fan on is a huge help when if you have that problem. In one of my more recent cases, I had it kind of sitting on a windowsill behind something else and they're just, air wasn't getting to those roots, even though it was set up like this. So if you've done all of these things and you're still having problems, simply putting a fan in the room may be the thing that can solve your problems. So I recorded the actual potting of this guy about, I don't know, month and a half, two months ago, and the audio was horrible, so I had to redo stuff. Anyway, he's been potted now for a month, and I just wanted to show you, look, new growth here. He's doing really well, and he's got, I don't know if you can see, hold on. He's got some new root 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 growth, root 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 growth, God, words are hard, root growth. Here, camera, focus on him, not my face. There we go, see that little guy right there by my pinky? That's a new root 
growing out of there. Anything when it comes to orchids, any growth is something to be excited about. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Unlike this week, which was an orchid video, plant potting. Today, this was a very abnormal video for me. I'll see you guys later.